You may know his work on screen, but this week we take you behind the lens and speak with film producer and pro-life activist Jason Jones. He's not a father and he's not going to be a father, just like I'm not going to be a mother. Jones is known to many pro-lifers for his award-winning film, Bella. But in part one of our exclusive interview, Jones opens up about his personal journey to the pro-life movement and eventually to the Catholic Church. Jason, you have a powerful pro-life witness. When that started as a teenager, you were 16 when you found out your girlfriend was pregnant. What was your response to that news? Well, yeah, it was a Saturday morning. I was just, I was lying in bed and uh, half asleep and uh, someone was coming up the stairs, sat on my bed, I opened my eyes, it was my high school girlfriend, and she just looked at me and she said, I'm pregnant. So the two of us, we spent that day trying to figure out what we were gonna do. And we were young, and we were naive, and we were idealistic, and so we came up with a plan that I would drop out of high school and join the Army on my birthday, which was two days away. And um, so that's what we did on my birthday. I went down uh, to the recruiter's office the day after my birthday, and there was a program, and I knew this program because a friend had gone straight into basic training in the middle of our senior year. It was for troubled youth. And I was last in my class out of 565 kids. Mm -hmm. So I was confident that I would qualify for this program. Didn't tell anyone about the pregnancy. Went into the Army, was at basic training, and it was on um, a Sunday morning. I, I wasn't a Christian, so I didn't go to church. And so when the other soldiers were at church, I would have detail. I was cleaning pots and pans. And a friend came running in and said, your girlfriend's on the phone crying. Ran out, answered the phone, and Katie was crying like I never heard anyone in my life cry. And the only way I can explain it to you is that her soul was crying. She just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry it wasn't me. And then her father said, we know your secret, and your secret's gone. I took Katie to get an abortion. And I didn't know abortion was legal. And my captain had to explain it to me because I was begging him to call the police. And I wish the whole world could see abortion the way that this uneducated, irreligious, 17-year-old high school dropout saw abortion. It's just utterly unthinkable. What message do you have for other post-abortive fathers out there? I mean, this is a journey that you've been dealing with yeah. for most of your life. Yeah, post-abortive men are probably pretty angry. I was angry. I wasn't a Christian. I was an atheist for 13 years in the pro-life movement. And I say, and a lot of the ministries for post-abortive healing are, are really designed for women. And men and women are different. Men heal through penance. Men heal through work. We have to be honest with ourselves. Mm. Threatened. You know, men, we can do these things. We have to assess what did we really do? What was our real role in this abortion? We have to come to terms with that. And I say we need, to, we need penance, and we need to work, and we need to serve the pro-life movement. We need to serve our local pregnancy centers. We need to work for legislation that protects the child in the womb from the violence of abortion. Jason, you are Catholic, but as you mentioned, you I'm used Catholic. to be atheist, and you yeah. were in the pro-life movement as an atheist. I was. I was on EWTN as an atheist. That, yeah. For 13 years, and 13 I think years, yeah. the pro-life movement has this reputation for being just conservative, church-going Christians. Yeah. So during that time period as an atheist, did you find your beliefs or your non-beliefs at, odd at odds with being no. your life? No. No. I, now, there, the vision of the human person that I held that, that allowed me to be repulsed by abortion mm -hmm. was the Christian understanding of the human person, which came to me through Western civilization, through the culture that I was born into, mm -hmm. right? That we all sort of hold this vague notion of, that the human person has dignity. Now, that's grounded in Christian in anthropology, but it would so offend me when people said, you're atheist and you're pro-life, when pro-lifers would say this. I'd say, does it surprise you that I'm against jaywalking and stealing candy bars? Hmm. No, that's different. Yeah, you're right. That's, those are really petty crimes. You know, abortion is the intentional destruction of the most vulnerable member of the human family. I don't need to be a Christian to know you don't hurt children. To me, a, you know, abortion is it's, it's ethics 101. I think if there's one rule that we can agree on as a human family that we protect the most vulnerable members of our family, the human family, from violence. And there is no more vulnerable member of the human family and the child in the womb and, and her and oftentimes and her struggling mother. Can you share a little bit about your faith journey, how you did end up becoming Catholic while being involved in the pro-life movement? After the abortion, I was really looking for a ground to support this vision of the human person. But it was then in reading Freud and Sartre and Nietzsche, they really obliterated for me any hope for human dignity 
that wasn't grounded in, in revelation. So I became open to studying uh, revealed religions. And I looked at Christianity last. I looked at Islam first. Wow. So, but it was really Sartre that convinced me that the vision of the human person that I was holding was Christian anthropology. Eventually, when uh, Islam didn't satisfy me, I started reading the Jewish scriptures, and my boss, I was chief of staff for a Jewish state rep, started, we started reading the Jewish scriptures together. It was in Isaiah 53 that I was startled to find Jesus Christ. And then when I read the New Testament, I remember thinking, if this isn't true, it's better than what's true. I started going to an evangelical church. I picked this church because it was the loudest voice for life in my community. So I thought, if they're the loudest voice for life, this must be the true church, the one true church. And it was an evangelical church. But I quickly discovered the church fathers, somehow G.K. Chesterton and Hilar Bellick. And as so many converts, we kind of all have the same story that mm -hmm. we somehow stumbled across orthodoxy and the church fathers. And I wrestled with becoming Catholic. And I was a secret Catholic for about a year. I assented to the truth of the church, but was praying to God for maybe a way to, a way out, a different type of relationship. What an incredible journey. We continue our interview with Jason Jones next week and hear the inspiration behind the film Bella and a new project Jones is working on and says is important for pro-life Catholics to know.